Lucy. How does one describe Lucy? What begins as a story of a woman with an average sort of human consciousness and a short-lived boyfriend with a pretty sweet hat very quickly transforms into a film about ascension. So as always, spoiler alert, and let's get into it. The idea of Lucy is the rapid escalation from a low level of consciousness and progressively moves into trying to describe what might happen if someone was to experience transcendent superconsciousness and unlock new powers that come along with it along the way. It is a commentary both on theoretical human evolution and psychedelics, actually very much psychedelics, LSD to be specific. In a way, the whole movie seems to be based around it. Allow me to explain. In the opening narrative, we see cell mitosis followed after with the shot of Lucy, the 3.2 million year old first early human, Australopithecus, before quickly cutting to Lucy, the 25 year old woman studying in Taipei. Before we go any further, it should be known that the ancient Lucy, the 3.2 million year old one, was named Lucy because the person who discovered it was listening to Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles when the discovery was made. This song today is notoriously known as a reference to LSD, the synthetic psychedelic often known for lifting one's consciousness to a more transcendent state of being, giving those who experience it lucid visions, deeper insight, and stimulating notions of spiritual expansion within. The entire film speaks about an idea of human evolution, which is very much in the similar line of thinking as 2001, A Space Odyssey, but done in a very different way. With Lucy actively going through quantum leaps in the evolutionary process throughout the film. But now we see deeper references to LSD by the fact that the entire story here is about this synthetic drug that is facilitating the evolution to happen and all of the wisdom that she uncovers throughout this process on her way to becoming a super being in a sense, planting seeds in the human imagination about what's truly possible. This is just a bit of personal conjecture here, but my overall experience with this film was that it seemed to me like the natural outcome of what would happen if a filmmaker were to have an LSD experience and then a conversation about humans overclocking the capacity of the brain. Throw in some theoretical quantum physics and a nebulous bad guy to give us some action scenes and bada bing, Lucy. Now in the film, our modern day Lucy has just the worst kind of luck, forced by her boyfriend to deliver a mysterious case to a South Korean drug lord. We're shown these scenes, cutting to a cheetah hunting and catching a gazelle in the wild. The initial thing this is describing is the animalistic nature of the predatory bad guys. And this is further elaborated on later by Morgan Freeman, giving a lecture about creatures and their capacity to use their brains. He describes that animals use three to 5%, the reference with the cheetah and the gazelle, with humans using about 10% and dolphins using the most with 20%. He speculates on human evolution and what paranormal or seemingly superpowers might occur when more and more brain capacity is unlocked. But now very quickly speaking to this brain capacity thing, if you look it up, the general scientific consensus nowadays around the internet is that humans use almost all of their brains and that the 10% thing is fully a myth. There's a whole wiki on the history of this idea that summarized essentially says this myth is busted. No matter how much brain capacity you utilize, you won't be able to change the look and length of your hair on command. However, we can go deeper here. Google how much of our DNA is junk DNA will reveal that the answer is 90%, meaning that only 10% of our DNA is truly utilized or active. Now I understand that brain capacity and DNA activation are two very different things, but we can see the relationship here that the idea of us only using 10% of our latent capacity is not so much about using portions of the brain, but depth within the brain and body through our DNA itself. And with more DNA activation, transforming us into greater, wiser, and more connected beings than ever before. So Lucy, having being newly adopted to the drug Lord's extended family, has a bag of blue stuff surgically embedded in her belly and is sent off to smuggle it through an airport to some other place. Along her way, a very rude man with a low state of consciousness kicks her while she's down which releases said blue stuff into her body. It turns out the blue stuff is a very powerful drug called CPH4, which is a molecule that pregnant women produce in very small quantities facilitating child growth. In this initial surge of CPH4 within Lucy, we see it trigger a wild experience, electrifying and energizing her body and temporarily negating gravity. Now there are stories and legends of wise spiritual masters doing things like this that would seem impossible from Jesus walking on water to the yogis who can levitate. And perhaps these kind of abilities could be available to anyone who has reached a certain level of human evolution. 
tapping into all of that limitless energy within us. So of course, Lucy escapes and goes on her way. Now beginning to activate, Lucy continually leveling up every 10 minutes or so and unlocking new achievements and upgrades, finds herself explaining these very fundamental concepts from a transcendent state of mind, inviting us to connect with her higher awareness as she explains it to us and accelerating our own spiritual evolution while we watch. Now to try and break down every scene here would probably be a bit much. So here's a highlight reel of all of the things Lucy experiences, which sound very much like things you might hear from either quantum physicists, spiritual masters, or people who just came down from an LSD trip. With Lucy activated, the very first thing that we see is that she becomes suddenly very clear. She enters into a meditative calm despite her circumstance and acts and behaves with a deeper knowing, a tremendous confidence to handle whatever she needs to, including breaking free of captivity. She can now suddenly hear and understand what is going on all around her to a tremendous depth. She says that she hears everything, the air, space, the vibrations, people, gravity, the rotation of the earth, the blood in her veins. She can feel her brain and the deepest parts of her memories. She feels everything because with more of this capacity comes more ability to feel. She also is soon able to see the energy of things like trees and her friend's body and is now motivated to obtain the other blue bags, which we learn she needs to crack open her cells, unlocking the limitless energy within them. When she arrives at the drug Lord's place, after killing his men and stabbing his hands, she takes a moment to reflect and ponder some more pretty deep stuff. She says, I used to be so concerned about who I was and what I wanted to be, but what makes us us is primitive. They are obstacles. The pain you're experiencing is blocking you from understanding. This is an amazing lesson for us all. And that is when we are struggling, when we are in pain, we limit ourselves from the expansion into the higher centers, into a higher knowing. And then she leaves him alive. I can't help but think this is the film's way to appease the general human consciousness. By leaving the villain alive, we can have some more action later on in the movie by having him come back and bring a bazooka to a university. Wait, what? Why? Anyway. Soon after this, she levels up again and unlocks the ability to telepath into Morgan Freeman's TV and manipulate various frequencies like radios and to appear on his smartphone screen. She says that all of the things that make us human are fading away. She doesn't feel pain, fear, desire, or things that make her a person. As these all fade away though, the workings of the universe become available to her, deep intrinsic understandings of the fabric of reality. Here she is undergoing a rapid state of ego death her consciousness is colonizing her own brain, activating it and leading her towards her transcendent death very quickly. She asks him for advice and he reflects that the ability to pass on information of what one has learned is one of the highest purposes of all of life and encourages her to do so. She says that she'll be there in half a day and they part ways. Now, there's a very interesting scene in the airplane where Lucy on her way to see Morgan Freeman has this experience of tasting some champagne. And let me tell you, her ascending body cannot hold its liquor because within minutes, she is exploding into particles of light in the bathroom. Now we're never really offered a concrete explanation as to why this scene is there. And personally, I kind of think it's there just essentially to be a scene of Lucy in the sky with diamonds of light. Anyway, a bunch of action scenes later, we arrive at Morgan Freeman's place and she continues to blow minds with quantum theoretical physics and describes that time is the only unit of measure for time legitimizes anything's existence. Without time, we don't exist because we become one with everything. Professor Freeman expresses his concern that humanity is not ready for this kind of knowledge. It could bring chaos. And Lucy responds with a solid truth bomb. Ignorance brings chaos, not knowledge. From here, Lucy ramps up to 100% and hits maximum limit break overdrive. She takes all of the CPH4 and her body transforms into like venom? Actually, it might be a bit more like a matrix reference. The black body form she takes is similar in nature to the sentinels in the matrix. And what's more, very soon she blasts away all of reality for herself and the doctors and they enter into the matrix loading zone. One recurring line of dialogue throughout this film is that the nucleus of every cell has limitless untapped potential and power. And that in this ascension process, she has to crack open every last one in order to attain the transcendence that she is steering towards. Eventually, in this process, she starts warping all over the place through time and space, watching human evolution transpire in certain ways. It's interesting that as she's blasting through New York, 
Nobody even takes notice of her, even as she goes backwards in time, until she goes back far enough and sees some Native Americans, who all look at her, very puzzled. This might be a subtle commentary about how humans today are notoriously distracted and do not pay attention to what's going on nearly as much as they could. Lucy then meets the first Lucy, and when they touch, future Lucy goes back to the beginning of time and blinks out of existence. The film ends with her texting her police buddy that she is everywhere, essentially transitioned into an omnipresent consciousness that exists beyond time and space, and telling the audience, life was given to us a billion years ago, and now you know what to do with it. The key to this movie, I feel, is to watch it while playing with ideas in your mind of what human evolution could truly look like. Could it be possible to transcend time and space and step into alternate realities with heightened abilities, just as some ancient spiritualities discuss that we can? For most people, this movie is just a movie, but who knows, maybe anything really is possible. Lucy is telling us that we now know what to do with the life that was given to us strive to evolve to the highest potential of our existence. Ooh.